Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're doing an overview of this, the ASRock Phantom Gaming Z790 Riptide Wi-Fi motherboard and it is very, very unique for a couple of reasons. The big thing here is Wi-Fi 7. First motherboard I've seen that has Wi-Fi 7. It is the Z790 chip, so it's Intel-based DDR5, and it has the PCIe Gen 5 version of both a PCIe Express slot and an M.2 slot. It's also dual channel DDR5, and it's got some really, really interesting features. So let's unbox this beauty right here. In the box, we have these cables right here. This is actually the lighting cables for your RGB. As you can see, it splits one header into three. On here, we've got a SATA cable, and we also have our Wi-Fi antenna, which is always interesting because I want to see if it's proprietary plugs. And no, it's not proprietary, it's pretty standard. These can be used with any other onboard Wi-Fi motherboard. The base is not magnetic, it's 3M, and it comes with a really cool cap for your mechanical keyboard because of course, whoever is buying this is a gamer. We have a thermal temperature sensor right here, and that's it. Let's have a look at the motherboard. Okay, this is the first motherboard I've seen that is packaged like this, but there are clips right here that you have to cut to get to the motherboard. There you have it. It is actually really nice, but I have to point out straight away, it feels rather flimsy. The PCB says 12 layers, but it feels quite white bendy. First of all, I really love this shroud. I think it looks really nice. Let's, of course, take off these and see what kind of M.2 slots we have in there. The screws don't pop out, which is fantastic. I really like that so you don't lose your screw. We've got one passive cooler right here with pads on the back for two M.2 drives right here. As we keep going, that cover has another two M.2 drives, really cool. We also have what looks to be the Wi-Fi card right here that is non-removable. So what they've done is they've physically put a card in there rather than building it into the motherboard. Very, very interesting. Now onto this little wobbly thing right here, this easily removable without screws passive cooler and this is for the PCIe 5 Gen M.2 drive slot right here. This is really nice. It is way thicker than the other passive coolers because Gen 5 SSDs do get a lot hotter than most. This is really good to see. I really like the design of this cooler. I'm a bit worried about it moving around, but I'm sure that once the M.2 drive is in there and the sticker is removed, it'll actually stick down and connect and touch with the M.2 drive. We've got our front I.O. and we've got our PCIe 3 uh, extension right here, 24 pin, and these capacitors here are 20K. They're long lasting and apparently high quality. I uh, will just have to trust that they are because there's no real way to, to test that. <laughs> We've got very thick cooling that actually extends over the top of the IO here. This seems to just be a sticker on there. We've got four slots for your RAM and I like it when the motherboard manufacturer color codes these but we're supposed to put the RAM sticks in the furthest one away starting from there and then when you add a second RAM stick you put it into the second one here so it's two and two. It is dual channel though if you've got four. The RAM can overclock to 8000 mega transfers again if that's important to you that's really good. From my testing higher mega transfers don't always translate into frames per second. The PCIe mount right here is actually soldered from the bottom up, which means you won't be able to rip these off, which is really, really good. And it is Gen 5, ready for that next level graphics card coming out probably in about 12 to 24 months. Okay, let's have a look at the I.O. We've got a Wi-Fi plugs right here, and the shield here is actually it's really wobbly, it's moving around a lot. It doesn't matter when it's actually in your computer. We've got some fast USBs right here, your standards over here, five gig, 10 gig. We've got one USB-C, we've got a display port and a HDMI port, and it depends on what CPU you have installed 
to make use of these standard USB right here. And we've got our audio, only three, which is really interesting. Now you may be wondering what this lightning gaming section right here means. It's got yellow USB-C plastic color inserts right here. Well, this has a separate USB-C chip meaning that whatever you've plugged in here will not affect the USBs in here, reducing potentially the traffic across these USBs. So what are you gonna plug into this? Well, the recommendation is actually a mouse and keyboard. I really like the idea of this, as long as you're not saturating each of these at crazy speeds, like dumping data from USB sticks, then this won't really be an issue, but it's really, really cool to see. Then we have our 2.5 gig ethernet. It is killer networking. Okay, let's move on to the very unique part of this motherboard, and that is the Wi-Fi 7 module right here. So instead of building this module into a proprietary motherboard, they just added an M.2 slot right here and threw it in. It's stuck on, you can't take it off. It is a unique way to do it. And in case Wi-Fi 8 comes out and is in a module like this, you can throw that in and do the same thing. I'm actually inclined to say a few more motherboard manufacturers should do this right now for Wi-Fi 6. And then when Wi-Fi 7 comes around, people can just upgrade because obviously it's still using the same antenna. It's still gonna use the same plugs. This would make it upgradable. The more modules, the better in my opinion. On this side, we've got six SATA ports, which is really nice to see. People still use large hard drives for storage. We've got two more SATA ports right here. We've got our HDD lights, your reset and power button right here. We've got our USB 3 headers and we've got our audio header right here. And what I really like seeing is this separation of audio right here. You can see it's nicely separated. If we look at the back, we'll probably be able to follow that line further. We've got a very, very clean PCB. We've got a couple of sharp bits out here, so they are quite tall. So watch your clearance when installing this in your case. Let's talk about a very unique feature to the Phantom Gaming lineup and specifically ASRock and that is the EDP signal connector that is actually on the back side right here. This is a ribbon connector for an external side panel that is a screen. If you've seen these really, really cool screens on the side of a case, well, it has its own ribbon cable right here that can connect to the ASRock 13.3 inch side panel kit. To finish off, we've got our Intel CPU right here, 1400K. As is tradition with Intel-based systems, you can pop it in, matching the cutouts at top and bottom, and when you push this back in, you'll notice that the plastic shroud will pop off and you can finish the clip right here. So very interesting from ASRock and I'm actually really impressed on the quality so far. So overall, this motherboard gets a big thumbs up from me. Highly recommend it. It is a feature packed motherboard with some really interesting things like that Wi-Fi 7 module. I think the only thing I would change is just the thickness of the PCB and color code these RAM slots. Overall, I really like this motherboard. Based on the price, this is a very, very impressive motherboard. It, I've seen it for about 499 Australian dollars and even cheaper in other places. And I have to admit, it's a very compelling package at this price. Friends, thank you very much for watching this overview of the ASRock Z790 motherboard. Links below where you can purchase this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in another video. Bye.